Hey guys, I just want to say that uh, I have finally landed my first buck. I've been doing this three and a half years. I've never been able to harvest one, not even a doe. I hit a doe with a rifle uh, right before dark about three years ago, found the blood trail. When we stepped into the weeds at dark, the weeds were at our neck, we couldn't find anything. Uh, so I've had a couple of stories, but never ever able to harvest one like I have wanted to do. Uh, on November the uh, 6th, 2018, probably two day, three days ago, I took this baby here. I'm an Illinois hunter. I'm a crossbow hunter. And uh, this was done on public lands. I just want to say that the story behind this baby is, um, you know, it was rut season. And I was actually tracking another buck uh, that I'd seen two days before. And I made a estrus trail for him. Uh, true to form, both of the guys came up uh, on uh, the downwind side. And I was uh, had a good uh, broad shot. Uh, but when there was a fork in the road uh, from where I had the estrus, because I was trying to make two trails come to me, I won't do that again because what I found is I had a trail coming this way and then a trail coming that way and they met. I didn't think about the fact that when they would come this way, they might go to the right and disappear from me. And that's what the, uh, the younger buck did. It was right at dark. I was very disgusted because the one buck, smaller buck that was following the doe went to the right. And um, uh, I was about ready to give up. I figured I said it's going to be another sad story. I had about 20 minutes before I wouldn't be able, be able to see through my sight. I use a Barnett crossbow. And so I just sat there. Um, uh, I made myself a little ghoulie suit so I wasn't anxious to take that off because I would have had to take it off. But prior, and I also did three three uh, uh, bleeps with the uh, doe sound, where it's the thing that makes the artificial doe sound. I had done that three times also. I did hear that loud blow behind me. It was a loud one, <laughs> really loud. I mean, much louder than that. And I always sit out in the woods with a uh, brush behind me, so if something comes behind me, I have to hear it come through the brush. But that sound was so loud behind me that I actually thought it might have been a bear or something. And I, I got a little bit alarmed about that because it was so strong. Uh, and I think he smelled me, but, you know, he didn't, he didn't have, he wasn't sure because I had put a lot of the scent killer around and so forth. And I sprayed quite a bit of that around. And between that and the estrus that he wanted to smell, I guess he decided since he didn't shake the bush, uh, that he would come on around. So I definitely heard him and I didn't know what the heck that was blowing like that behind me But it, it, it had to be him So about 10 minutes later or less That's when I see him on that same side coming around and The first buck actually got to the point where I thought he was going to come to me He went to the right and disappeared and that's why I was disgusted as I said before this one got to that point when he got to that point, I actually kind of panicked because I said, he's got four steps to take to be behind the tree and I will not get a sight again of this beautiful buck. So I did the, the traditional quack, stopped, he turned around, he took a look, I shot, immediately hit him, he jumped up. I didn't, well, he was kind of, I guess maybe this might have been a, I would say it was a 40 yard shot, shot, 35 or 40 yard shot. And between trees, so it was only one little space, so I was pretty confident that I made a hit. I stayed uh, down for about 20 minutes. I put my bow down. I was hoping. I called my wife, said I think I hit one. I waited 20 minutes. I backed out of the bush. I went took my bow to the, to the vehicle. I talked to another hunter. He came with me back. Uh, we walked back quite a long distance and looked around and couldn't find anything. We couldn't find blood. We couldn't find uh, the bow, the arrow. I told him I never find my arrows anyway, and just no sign of the dope being hit. Now I'm wondering if I totally missed. I was confident that I didn't. So the guy left. The hunter left. My sons came. We combed the whole area on that side. It was a stream in between, uh, a stream right next to where I shot him. I didn't hear the bush, sh bush shaking too much after I shot him. So I felt like he was right behind me somewhere. 
or he should have been in the area. We looked and looked and found nothing. Then we finally went on the other side of the stream, crossed the bridge, went on the other side of the stream, and uh, we looked and saw nothing. And after about 30 minutes, I saw my arrow. Never seen one of my, found one of my arrows before. And there was fur on it and some dried blood. And man, was I happy. I was happy for a moment that I hit him. Then I said, oh, hell, there's no blood trail around anywhere. So I might have hit him in the ear, hit him anywhere, somewhere insignificant, grazed him. So I then got a little bit disgusted again. So I told my boys, I said, hey. $40 for whoever helps find it, just to make it an in, uh, interesting night for them. So they started looking looking uh, fervently, and one of my sons, who actually does some tracking with Civil Air Patrol, one of my sons actually found the blood trail. And when he found that blood trail, man, was I happy. We found a pocket of blood. And true to form, just like they say when the bucks get hit, a lot of times they go to a stream of water where it was marsh on that side. And actually... Uh, my boots that they say, snake boots they said were uh, waterproof or not. So I was in water anyway, so I just walked in and water came up over my boot and up to my knee, but I kept walking in it. And uh, eventually we found a little stream, uh, off of that stream, a little tributary you might say. And the blood was going up the tributary just like they say, he was sticking around water. It was diminishing and it finally petered out, there was no blood whatsoever. And it was right before Phil, I said, oh my God, I said, he's trying to make it across the other side. We're going to do this on the other side of all that thicket over there. And about 20 feet out, one of my sons hollered out, said, here he is. And this is the boy right here that we found. This head, by the way, is right at 33 pounds. I waited. I hope the scale was right. This was a big boy. Uh, my sons uh, and, the, and the guy that was with me, they all uh, lift weights. And we all swear that this, this thing had to be somewhere around, you may not believe it, but 400 pounds. It was a 14 point I re registered it at 12. I didn't count the, the, uh, the, the um, points that were pointing this way forward. They said that I was supposed to, so that would make it a 14 pointer. But uh, that's, that's, this is a big guy here, big. He's a big, he's a big fellow here. Uh, and he's been in the refrigerator for a while. Uh, he got one of his, uh, looks like one of his antlers got some years ago broke off in a fight. But here's my hand. My hand's pretty big. So you can see those racks go up pretty high. And uh, here's the fellow here. I just, he's been frozen. I'm going to have him taxidermy uh, so he can stick around for quite a while. So I hope you enjoyed this story, and I want to say about chronic wasting disease, I personally hope that they prohibit anybody from feeding um, these animals uh, on their private lands or anywhere else. I know you can't do it in a lot of states, but it's not in our best interest to, uh, to uh, feed animals like that if that disease can spread in that manner. So I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, keep hunting because it can happen for you.